everybody. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, I just thought for a cool video idea, um, I was just showing my intern how to clean up my pages. Um, and I thought, why not show it to everybody else? So I have this old page from a book I did called Murder Falcon. It is a splash page, and I'm, we're going to clean it up in Photoshop together. So, yes, let's do it. So... So I have a large format scanner, um, and uh, it's a uh, Epson WF7720, right? Yes. So I don't know what the pandemic's doing to products, uh, holdups and stuff. I hear that printers are hard to get, but that's the one I have. It was about $250. So. Okay, so I do everything through Photoshop. A lot of scanners have like built-in programs, but I never use them because I hate them. I always go into Photoshop, and I've got Creative Cloud 2020 here. Um, and we're going to go to File, Import, Images from Device. going to get this thing popping up. Uh, it always says this, and then it works. I don't know why. Sorry if this is uh, very intro-level stuff, but I just figured it would be good for people to learn. Just in case you don't know. And this is just the way that I do things. So, you know, there's a million different ways to get to the same place in Photoshop. Okay, so, uh, 600, I always scan things at uh, color, not black and white. I always scan things in color at 600 DPI. Now, you can go lower, especially if there's not a ton of room on your computer or you're trying to save space, but. I like having a really big file just in case I ever need to use uh, my images for something like a banner or some sort of design thing that requires something to be a little bit larger. Also I like scaling down my pages because when I bring things into a template usually provided by Image, Marvel, DC, whomever, if you sca scale it down it just makes sure that everything's going to be super crisp. You never want to be bringing something into a template and then making it bigger because there's a chance that it will pixelate and so on and so forth. So I always do 600. I always go overboard. Um, and here I'm just going to uh, select the area. So each scanner might, uh, eat, you know, you should be doing this in Photoshop, but whatever. So I, I murder falcon test here. I have a, I have a place where I keep all my raw scans and then I can always have the original file, the raw scan, just the way it has always been, always was, in a separate folder. So I scan in JPEG, um, and I don't do any other stuff. I just hit scan. So, so I have this page from Murder Falcon because uh, we were selling issue. Uh, my art rep Felix was selling this issue, um, kind of broken up. And uh, I just really wanted this uh, page. I uh, all the pages were selling quite fast, and I wanted to make sure that I had one at least one page for myself from the series that I could have at home. So uh, this is the one that I chose. So yeah. All right. So here we've got our page. Um, I'm gonna just rotate it really fast. So. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, when we scan in color, all of my whiteout, things like this, you can see it's a little messy. You can see that, you know, we're not, it's not totally, uh, it's just a little messy, right? And this is not going to print out very well, uh, or it's not going to, it's not going to print well, I should say. When you send this to the printer, you do want things to be more or less black and white. There's obviously an element of gradation that is pleasurable. But things like this, like these knuckles and this hand is a little gray for me. Um, you know, there's some like artifacts here and, you know, like little things here, like with the whiteout, which I don't like. And I just want to make everything a little more uniform and just clean everything up and just make it just looking a little sexier. So I always work in grayscale, but before I work in grayscale, I always adjust the levels before I touch anything in grayscale. So at f the very first thing I do is I work in color. Um, so I'm going to hit uh, Command L on a, on a Mac and it brings up the levels. Now let me just zoom in here a little bit. You can tell that 
there's a gradation here. There's I want to bring things together a little bit. So I'm going to bring in the blacks. I never touch the grays. I just bring in the blacks. And, you know, I'm pretty liberal with how much I put in. Right? I like to darken it up a fair amount. And then I'm going to I'm going to bring up the white a little bit, but so here's the thing which I've noticed and I always tell my interns and anybody that's cleaning up my pages you can really go pretty hard on this black and it's not really gonna look bad I mean obviously if you get too much it's too much but you can always go darker than you can go lighter so if you notice if we bring the light if we bring this white up the same we really start losing I'm just gonna we really start losing the definition things get really lost especially if you're the kind of artist that has like very fine lines like me with a lot of um, detail things are going to get washed out much faster I just control Z there than if you bring the uh, blacks in so I always start with the blacks and I always bring in the blacks and I'm you know I don't go crazy and then I'll bring up the whites but I won't I'll, I err on the side of extreme caution with the whites here. I'm only going to come in like this much. Um, so already we're looking, you know, it's looking a little better. Uh, not perfect. You'll notice that we still have the blues, you know, it's not in grayscale yet. So now that I've adjusted and done my initial pass with the levels, I'm now going to go and make this a grayscale image, which just makes things a little easier to work with when cleaning up black and white line art. So going to go to image mode and grayscale and all right so that already has kind of helped bring everything together it already looks better um, now uh, it comes the easy part or fun part whatever you want to call it so you know we have this kind of nasty gray here which I don't like um, we've got some like mess in the windows and the lights you can see that the roofing on the roof is like quite light so the first thing I do, I always start by burning, uh, using the burn tool in Photoshop, which is right over here, and I make sure that uh, I burn everything that I want burned first before I go in and dodge stuff, because same thing with the levels, if you dodge first, there's a really good chance that you're going to wash everything out, or wash lines that you spend a lot of time trying to perfect, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go over to the range. And oh, this is a dodge, so I'm going to go to my burn tool. So I go to range, I always select for the burn tool, I select shadows, and I set the exposure around 27 to 30. Sometimes, if things are really light, maybe I'll go up to 35, but yeah, I usually just keep it around 25 to 30 percent. And I always make sure I use like an airbrush style brush uh, with pressure sensitivity so I can, you know, really pinpoint what I want. So I'm going to go and I'm not going to go crazy, right? Because I have a life. I don't want to like zoom in too much. I'll zoom in maybe about there. I'll start here. And uh, I'm just going to like burn away. So this is actually pretty intense, 27%. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit to like 21. So as, as needed, use your discretion. And I'm not going crazy here. I'm not like blowing it out. I just want to kind of highlight and do a quick pass. Um... Kind of bring things over, make it just a little more uniform. And there are some times where I will leave gray. Um, I won't just go all black all the time. Um, so you know, also, I'm going to go lighter. I'm not going to go as intense here because I know I'm going to dodge that later. So I don't want to burn it too much. But here on the side of the house, definitely going to uh, burn that. Zooming out to make sure I have an idea. I'm really going to attack this roof because that was really light. Get under here at this. Uh, so again, I know I want to clean this area up, so I'm going to kind of avoid that for right now. Right here. And then so this uh, these knuckles are very gray, so I'm going to hit these pretty hard. It's looking way better. I also I will also just kind of do a quick burn with the grays. So a quick burn on the black, sorry. 
Okay, so now things are like relatively burned, but not crazy. Um, and now we're going to go over, we're going to go to the duo of the dodge tool. We're going to set the dodge tool to highlights. And, you know, 38% is pretty intense. I might bring it down to like 30. Same kind of range that I have the dodge in. And I'm going to just bring out these stars a little bit. And again, I'm being much more conservative. I can be pretty liberal with these uh, stars here because they're just stars. It's like very textural stuff. Uh, and I'm just going to go in here. But you notice like you can see like the way that the lines are changing when I burn things. I do want to be careful with that. See how much that gets knocks out. So I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. And then I'm just going to go right back and I burn it to so make sure I don't lose that detail. Uh, and so I'm going to dodge a little bit more. Like, I don't know if I, let's see. Might, I might, so I might burn this a little more to get some more definition and then go back in and dodge. I could also make the dodge tool a little smaller, but I don't really like doing that because I don't like this to take forever. Uh, so. I'm going to dodge this out, which I, I really don't like that gray there. Just, again, not I'm not going crazy. Also, you'll notice like sometimes you'll lose stuff with the dodge, and I just go right back in, and I'll burn it again to make sure that it isn't, I'm not losing anything. So I'm going to uh, dodge out these lights a little, dodge out. So this is like, you know, white out that I've used that has kind of a un- I mean, it looks cool when it's in the original art, but it just doesn't print very well. And it's hard for that tastefulness to come through in the printed page. It just will look kind of sloppy, in my opinion. Um, let's see. So I've noticed this is still pretty gray. So I'm just going to go back in right away with the burn tool and get that a little darker. So you notice, so on my first pass, I didn't really attack this. Remember, I was kind of leaving it for the dodge. And then as I get a little bit more zoomed in and be really careful with the, the dodge, I might see that, you know what, I actually want to burn certain parts of this more. And so now I'm dodging, I'm like getting rid of some of these white out grays in the grass, in the tall grass. Um, right here. So you can see like I'm starting to lose that definition on the port, so I'm just going to burn that in. There's actually some pencil marks here, and I usually, if it's just stray pencil marks, I will just dodge it out. I don't, I do erase everything, and it's here too, like when I've got white out kind of effect marks, I will dodge that out. Uh, oh, wrong one, control Z. And I'm gonna dodge this out. And things are looking pretty good. I'm gonna go back in and burn some more down here. So again, I can be much more loose and carefree with the burn tool than the dodge. Dodge is a dangerous weapon. Very useful, but you know, go easy with it. Definitely wanna so you notice so you notice that the edges of the grass were a little grayed out. A lot of times when I really want to get that nice contrast, I will definitely make sure to highlight that and really get in there with the burn tool to really highlight the difference of uh, black and white. I'm just gonna see if I can uh, dodge this porch a little bit more down here. So instead of like just going over and over and over, I could go up and set the exposure, but I am just too lazy. <laughs> um, all right, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to dodge this panel. You know, not going crazy with it. And I do like having a little bit of texture. That's why I'm not like going in here and just getting every little thing. I personally think it's a waste of time and uh, my life is too short. So <laughs> as it is. And then there we go. Uh, this looks way better than it did before. I should have taken a shot before and done a before and after shot, but you know, 
it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, I like it when it's still a little messy, but it does need to be cleaned up a little bit, and I think we did that very well. Oh, I'm noticing this here. I don't like that, so I'm just going to fix this really. So I'm going to burn this first just to make sure I don't lose those lines, and I'll go back in and dodge a little bit. And that's that. Pretty simple. Um, I save as a JPEG, and then I make sure to save like a small like a tiny version so I can send to editorial or whoever may need to see it before we get it to the, to the colorist, my colorist Mike Spicer. So I guess that's it. Uh, hold on, let me figure this out. Okay, there it is. That's it. It's super simple. I don't think I forgot any process. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know. Or I hope it maybe helps. That's all. And have a great rest of your day.